Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. Today, I want to talk about an article I recently read in the February 2023 issue of The Absolute Sound by Robert Harley called Lies, Damn Lies, and Speaker Sensitivity Specs. In there, he gives some good information about speaker sensitivity and, in my opinion, a lot of bad information. Now, Dennis Berger and primarily Brent Butterworth destroyed this article in the 26th episode of the Soundstage Audiophile podcast, so listen to that if you want to know more. But in that article, the thing that really got me was where Robert Harley called a 4-ohm 2.83-volt sensitivity spec a trick. It's not a trick. Now, to understand why Harley is basically dead wrong calling it a trick, you have to understand what speaker sensitivity is, so I'll try to explain it, hopefully in an easy-to-understand way. So what speaker sensitivity relates to is the output you get given a certain input. And let me relate this to getting a needle. I'm terrified of getting needles. And the nurse just has to touch me with a needle, and I'm almost screaming, whereas my wife, you can puncture her five, ten times, and she doesn't care. I am really sensitive. I'll scream loud getting a needle, and my wife is not sensitive getting the same needle. So I have high sensitivity to it. She has low sensitivity. Loudspeakers really aren't any different. If you put a signal into a loudspeaker and it plays loud and then the same signal into another loudspeaker and it plays quieter, well, the one that played louder has higher sensitivity than the one that played quieter. It's as simple as that. Now, when it comes to measuring the sensitivity of a loudspeaker, there are some pretty standard ways, the industry norms. There's the input signal, and this is the source of confusion in Harley's article, and I'll get to that in a second. And then there's the measuring of the output. And what's normal to do is put a microphone one meter in front of the loudspeaker and capture the output at that distance. And then the output is usually expressed in decibels. So the higher the decibel number, the more sensitive the loudspeaker is given the same input signal. Now, I don't want to get too far into the weeds here regarding the output signal because it has very little to do with what Harley wrote, but I do want to give you a little more information about how we capture sensitivity. We don't just use one microphone, we use five in front of the loudspeaker to eliminate the errors that just having one microphone can bring. For example, say a peak happens at just one spot in front of the loudspeaker, but it doesn't happen in other spots just outside of that. Well, having five kind of smooths that all out to give a more realistic portrayal of what's happening in front of the loudspeaker. Likewise, we don't just take the sensitivity at one frequency. We average from 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz because, again, you might have a spike or a dip just at one frequency. That gives an artificial impression of what the output really is. Finally, we measure in a true anechoic chamber, not in a room, so we don't get the room gain, which can artificially contribute to a higher sensitivity than what the loudspeaker itself is really producing. So now let's talk about that input signal. Like I said, the source of confusion. Robert Harley asserts that it's one watt input. That's the industry standard, and maybe it was at a time, but I'll explain why it isn't. The real standard is 2.83 volts. And we've been measuring loudspeakers for almost 25 years at Canada's National Research Council, possibly the place that more loudspeakers have been measured over the decades than any other place in the world. And that's how we do it. Now, here's the thing. When you give a 2.83 volt input into an eight ohm speaker, it's one watt. But into a four ohm speaker, it's two watts. And here lies the confusion. So where does all this one watt and two watts come from? Something called Ohm's law. Look it up. You'll be able to calculate it yourself. You'll see the formula. And if you put 2.83 volts into an eight ohm load, you will get one watt. That's what the amplifier has to deliver. In a four ohm load, you get two watts out of the formula. Into a two ohm load, four watts, and so on. And so where the confusion lies is this volts and watts thing, and they're all kind of related. 
But what Harley asserts is that the 8 ohm loudspeaker is more sensitive than the 4 ohm loudspeaker, even though they're outputting the same SPL, because you need double the power into the 4 ohm loudspeaker. Therefore, he says, subtract 3 dB from the sensitivity spec, which is wrong. He would be correct if we were talking about power sensitivity. We're not. When we're talking about sensitivity, we're talking about voltage sensitivity. And why do we use volts? Because loudspeakers are never simply 8 ohms or 4 ohms. They might be at certain frequencies, but I'm going to put up some impedance charts that we created on real loudspeakers, and you'll see they're all over the map. Could be 30 ohms, 3 ohms, 8 ohms, 4 ohms, 7 ohms, 13 ohms, whatever. Across the audio band, it's varying the impedance. So Harley's under the mistaken assumption that you can say, oh, just give it one watt. Well, let's go to Ohm's law. Look at your impedance curve. What's one watt? Given that fluctuation you see, tell us. It's almost impossible to figure out. Aha, this is where 2.83 volts comes in. Give it 2.83 volts, a constant signal. Then what matters is that the amplifier that's driving the loudspeaker can supply the current to deliver the proper output. And properly designed amplifiers, basically all of them today, can supply the current. So we have a constant now. So this idea of giving it one watt in practicality doesn't really exist in loudspeaker measurements. Like I said, maybe at a time it was a standard or people tried to do it, but 2.83 volts is the norm and we've been measuring loudspeakers for, oh, about 25 years at Canada's National Research Council where 2.83 volts has always been the standard. And now we have that constant figure that we can compare loudspeaker to loudspeaker because remember 2.83 volts it doesn't care what the impedance curve is providing the amplifier can deliver the current and believe me almost all well all good amplifiers today can supply the current maybe there are some that can't but i guarantee if you've got a good amplifier at home even tube amps they can supply the necessary current then the 2.83 volts is a constant. And when you see the sensitivity figure, you are seeing the voltage sensitivity figure. That's what you're seeing, not power sensitivity, voltage sensitivity. And in the podcast, Brent presented a great question to Dennis. He asked, and I can't remember what the exact output was, maybe 90 dB, say. Dennis, if two loudspeakers are given a 2.83 volt input and they both output 90 dB but one is an 8 ohm loudspeaker and one is a 4 ohm loudspeaker which is playing louder? Now Robert Harley says shave 3 dB off of the 4 ohm loudspeaker spec but they're both outputting remember 90 dB with the 2.83 volt input. Well they're both outputting the same volume level, 90 dB. That's the sensitivity spec. And that's what we're talking about. Voltage sensitivity, not power sensitivity. But that's not to say the whole power thing is completely irrelevant. There is some importance. When you deliver 2.83 volts into 8 ohms, it's 1 watt. Into 4 ohms, it's 2 watts. That's double the power. And increased power could cause voice coil heating, whatever. So when I'm looking at the measurements, I am mindful of the voltage sensitivity and the impedance. If I look and say, oh, this is getting quite a high sensitivity and the impedance stays pretty high. Remember, it's varying all over the place. Okay, so it's delivering not that much power in these areas, one watt, one and a half watts, whatever. Oh, but the impedance is very low through this region, so it's delivering more power. Now, whether that translates into a problem with the speaker has a lot to do with the speaker design and what the drivers can withstand and all that. It's just not as simple to say, oh, because it's 4 ohm, it's worse than 
eight ohms. There's a lot more to it than that. And the important thing is it's not a trick. Nobody is out to fool you by putting four ohm load in this sensitivity figure. Like I like to say with all measurements, they are what they are and the impedance is what it is. And remember, an eight ohm or four ohm impedance might be that at one specific frequency, but when you look across the audio band, it's all over the map. So if you read Harley's article, I say to take it with a grain of salt, understand it's not that simple to say, oh, an eight ohm speaker is better than a four ohm one. Because after all, what about a 16 ohm speaker? Is it automatically better than both? It's a whole bunch of things that go into loudspeaker design and you have to have a good understanding of it all to really make sense of it all. And if you read that article, it's going to give you some bad advice. At least that's my opinion on it. And Brent's and Dennis's. But that's all I'm going to say if you want to learn more about it, if you want to hear Brent and Dennis really eviscerate the column, Go to www.soundstage.life for episode 26 of the podcast. And that's it for today. I hope that helped. Subscribe if you like this content and see you next time.